Hey folks, Michael Mann with Michael Mann Security Services. Welcome to Security Guard to Bodyguard Part 2. Okay, Part 2 is going to cover operational planning. So the agenda for the next 15-20 minutes, we're going to talk about the foundation for providing effective protection, which we talked about last week, and we're getting into some basics of operational planning. All right. So last week we talked about this. I'll get into it again tonight because we hit the first part of this, which is planning. If we looked at the foundation of protection or the foundation for providing effective protection, that is really going to cover three elements, and that is planning or operational planning, conducting the advance, and then, of course, the arrivals and departures of the principal. Planning, because you know our job is prevention or preventing the attack from occurring, and uh, really what that takes is uh, security planning or operational planning. So there's detailed planning that goes into preventing an attack, and we're going to get into that here in just a minute. The advances, which we'll talk about next week, are those security measures and procedures that are conducted and completed prior to the principal arriving to the location or venue. Again, we'll cover those next week. And then arrivals and departures. These are the most dangerous places or locations. We talk about risk or exposure to hazard. These are the most riskiest times and locations for the principal. And so we want to be um, skilled at conducting the arrival uh, and departures. And we will get into that in two weeks. The course that we've got coming up in November covers these three elements uh, in detail as, as quick as we can do, or as, as good as we really can do that in three days. It's an introduction to foundation protection. And I do cover this again in that basic three-day course. All right. So let's talk about operational planning, what that means. So there are a number of operational plans we talk about, whether the security planning, mission planning, whatever. Uh, tonight, what we're going to get into is just very quickly a warning order. So you folks have been in the infantry before, military, you understand what a warning order is. For you guys, not not a big deal. I'll get into it here. Um, uh, and the reason why I've included this is uh, if you're getting into this, especially uh, you know if you're a security officer, you're just now getting into executive protection, or you're trying to understand um, that if you get, uh, get to be part of a protective operation or detail, a lot of times in this world, uh, you know, especially like where I'm at here in Nashville, there's a lot of protective operations that go on. It's being conducted by security personnel, like security officers and retired police officers or active duty police officers. They're doing an off duty capacity. There's not a detailed operations order or plan. What ends up happening if they're lucky, there is a warning order, which is a very abbreviated assessment of what is going to happen or what is going to take place. And uh, that warning order or that plan should be provided to protective agents as soon as the protective mission is received by whoever that may be. Maybe it's a detail leader. Maybe it's the security company that you're working for, uh, et cetera. So what it answers very quickly is the who, what, when, where, and how of this protective mission. Like, you know, who are we protecting? What's happening? When is it going to happen? Where? And then, you know, how are we going to do this? And so I'm going to go over this in detail. And again, uh, a lot of times, and especially in the world that I see here, and maybe it, same thing at your location, there's not always a very detailed operations order. And so sometimes all you get is a warning order. But understand, once you receive this mission, if you receive it quick enough, there's some detailed planning that you can conduct. And we'll get into that here in just a second. All right. So that who, that first question that needs to be answered is who is the client or who is the principal? So that principal or protectee is the protected client, the person that's paying someone for us to protect them, right? So uh, maybe they're paying the security company, maybe they're, you know, they're, they're paying somebody indirectly, but we're getting paid somehow to protect them. So that is the principal. When we talk about principals in general, we're talking about uh, their public figures, and there's several different types of public figures, especially in protection. They could be politicians. Uh, they could be social influencers. Uh, they could be entertainers. Uh, they could be athletes. There are a number of public figures that require or at least pay for protection. Not necessarily, Maybe it doesn't necessarily mean they always need it. Maybe it's a status issue or status symbol for them, but they pay for protection. And so because of that, it, you know, it's a job for us. Now, understand public figures have an uh, influence on the public. That's the way we call them a public figure. If it's a politician, decisions they make, right? So they influence the public. If it's a social influencer, you know, someone in social media, uh, because of things that they say or do, uh, they influence what the public does or the way that they think. 
you know, if it's a famous athlete uh, that's paid, you know, uh, large amounts of money to perform well, uh, you know, sports is a big deal in the U.S. So, you know, because of that, sometimes they want protection. And so understand these folks have an influence on the public and there are times they need protection. Um, that position or influence of that principle, right? So the position they hold and the influence that they have on the public, when we start to talk about the risk assessment, so the likelihood of an attack happening, the vulnerability associated with something that we're not doing from the protection standpoint, um, and then, of course, that impact or that consequence, uh, that is risk. Those are the elements of risk, and the position or influence will tell us our consequence level. And we get into that. We'll get into that in some presentations several weeks down the road so you can understand what that means. All right. So I want to know who the principal is. And again, uh, this is not the detail operations order. Right. This is just a warning order and things that I need to figure out are things I need to know uh, prior to jumping on this mission. OK. You know, here is, uh, you know, here's Mark Zuckerberg. He is a social influencer. Yeah, He owns Facebook, started it, owns it, still runs it. Right. Uh, you know, these are some of his, I know some of these folks, a couple of them, I don't know if they're still there or not, but you know, you see, he's, this is, uh, he's over in Europe, he's going for a jog, and of course, because of his social impact and influence on the public, you know, they're, they're videoing uh, him and filming him, and they're getting his bodyguards there, his close protection folks, so, you know, he, he is an influencer, and so because of that, there's consequence uh, of an attack, and of course, so because of that, he has uh, a security detail here with him, all right? What are the immediate threats? When we start to talk about types of threats, or uh, really this gets into our protection objectives also, uh, we really have, when we talk about protection objectives, we're worried about protecting the principal from intentional threats, unintentional threats, and from embarrassment. There's some other things that we protect them from, uh, you know, or against the things like, you know, something that would negatively impact their branding, technical threats, which would be, you know, uh, someone trying to bug their home, whether a tour bus or whatever. So, uh, I want to know what the immediate threats are to the principal, okay? Uh, uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, do I want to take the job? Number two, do we have effective protection to do this? And number three, of course, the most important is, if I don't know what those threats are, I don't know what to look for, okay? Video I'm about to show you, I, you may have seen this before if you watched some of our other videos. I might have shown this last week in the initial um, security guard to bodyguard uh, presentation. This is a uh, protective agent, looks like in Mexico, very, very sharp. And so, number one, he's situationally aware. Uh, number two, uh, he understands what the environment's supposed to look like. Uh, so, he's maintaining 360 degree security. You're going to see uh, that he is, he's looking for something. So, um, you know, we assume that he understands what the immediate threats were uh, prior to this attack on this principal or attempted attack. So you, let's watch this here. So you can see he's maintaining 360 degree security. There's probably been a threat assessment done. And again, the way he's acting, he's very, very sharp. Maybe just a sharp agent, but here, because of what he's doing, the way he's acting, his awareness level, uh, he probably understood what the immediate threats were or what they are. Uh, you can see here, he picks up something here in just a second, okay? Something outside the norm. And see, he kind of starts to look. And so this guy pulls up, looks like some sort of delivery person. He steps in between himself and the principal. He's actually screening. And then this ends up turning into an intentional threat or it looks like an attempted assassination. The principal evacuates and then the protective agent responds. You can see the protective agent has, uh, you know, neutralized the threat. Threat has gotten away. And of course, he used cover. And now he's going to uh, make sure that the principal is okay. She knew what to do. And because she knew what to do, it looks like more than likely somebody knew uh, what those immediate threats were. So that's why this is important. Number three, when is the assignment? I want to know when the assignment is. Number one, so, you know, what, you know what's the time and date? Uh, two, do I have time to plan and prepare for this assignment? What does that mean? You know, if it's going to be in two hours, do I have my equipment together? Am I ready? Um, can I take the assignment? You know, maybe I can't because I've got to go to work. If I'm doing this part time and my primary job starts in three hours, I can't take an assignment in two hours, obviously. What about the environment? Is there anything about the environment that I need to know that would tell me um, something I need to know about this uh, very particular mission? Um, is that environment going to be busy? So with the time, the time and date, is, is there going to be an issue uh, with that environment? Uh, the video I'm about to show you um, is a protective detail. Looks like this is in New York City. 
Uh, and this is uh, the guy in the car. Uh, he's got a, I don't know if this is an Uber driver or, or what, but he's got a video camera in his car. And you're going to see up here at this intersection, this is a protective detail. And uh, this is New York probably always looks like, or, you know, pre-COVID, it probably always looked like this. This looks like it was back in September 2017. So there's a lot of traffic in this area. Uh, and you're going to see the protective detail does something socially unacceptable. Okay. And so we start talking about dates, times. Uh, here, it's a time of heavy traffic. And the protective detail does something, again, that's socially and actually legally unacceptable. And so we don't want to get into this. So this is why we need to know, you know, the date and time of when the protective detail is going to occur. All right. So you kind of see the guys like, whoa, what are you doing cutting out in front of me here? No. Yeah, sorry for the language. No, you're so he didn't want to let the second vehicle in. Second vehicle's got some protective agency. He said, no, you can't do that. I've got the right of way, which he does, right? Uh, so it's it's kind of cut this motorcade off, you know, because of all this traffic. This guy's got the right of way. This is his legal right. He didn't have to let anybody in. Now you're going to see something that's socially and legally unacceptable here by the protective agent. Now the protective agent or, you know, whoever this is, oh, this yo-yo. What are you guys doing? Gets out and illegally because he's not a police officer. Or late, so there's no badge. There's no uniform. Right? Well, he can't I ask have, him to stop. Right he away. can't. I don't care. Looks like a civilian. He can't stop traffic. Right? No, I just, I just have your license plates and I'll just report you. No problem. No, you don't. Good job, take it. Yeah. So this is legally and socially unacceptable. Legally unacceptable for the security detail. Socially unacceptable California for the principal. Second. Okay, so we talk about protection from embarrassment. Now we may have caused our, our principal embarrassment. Like he's got his tag number. He's reading it out. Uh, this video, obviously, I pulled this off of YouTube, so it's all over. So here's another guy. Here's another part of the protective detail. Again, something socially unacceptable. Okay? So why, this is why it's important. What about date and time? What about the time is going to impact my ability to uh, provide effective protection and not embarrass the principal? Where is the location of venue? So where do I need to report? Okay. Uh, what about advances? Um, you know, uh, do I need to do an advance? And you do. Uh, but what's an advance look like? And of course, the site security survey. So I need to know where I need to show up. And number two, I need to know where I need to do my advance in surveys to actually provide effective protection. Okay. <coughs> what you're about to see here is the beast. This was back. Cut the volume down on this. You don't need to hear the volume or didn't need to hear it really. So you're going to see the beast. This is during one of the other administrations. They're overseas somewhere, I believe. And we talk about side advances, choke points, right? Oh, boom. The beast, because of the weight, gets stuck. Now, again, I don't know what happened here, right? But this is a, this is a problem for the president. Now his vehicle, right, the protective vehicle is now stuck and cannot move. Now he's inside or, you know, he's kind of halfway inside the embassy and outside he's stuck. This is a very vulnerable, uh, vulnerable position for the president. Uh, this is the U.S. Secret Service. I don't know what happened here, but, you know, obviously it looks like, uh, you know, this probably wasn't taken into consideration. Something else could have happened. Maybe this was a secondary exit to, or this was a primary exit. Uh, maybe in advance, you know, there wasn't time for it. I don't know, but this is the reason why I know I want to know where, uh, I'm, you know, where the location is, so I know where I can do advances. So look what the Secret Service is having to do. They're having to do a lot of things to, like, countermeasures to, uh, to put into place here, so the uh, the uh, the principal here, the president, is not put in harm's way, right? So they put this now, this bus in front of the beast. Uh, as they get the beast unstuck and probably move the president or the principal out of the vehicle and put them in a safe location until they get this thing unstuck, right? All right, so again, where is it? So I need to know where the choke points are, what the advances look like, et cetera, okay? And then number five, how do we provide effective protection? Uh, so we need to review the threat assessment if the threat assessment has been done. How many protective agents are required for this mission and what equipment is needed, okay? Video I'm about to show you this was a, was a, uh, uh, Put or a critic of Vladimir Putin. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, he was assassinated. You're about to see the assassination. So the principal is standing out here on his phone, waiting on his bodyguard, which is here, the protective agent. Um, I'm sure that they probably knew that there was, uh, you know, that there was some uh, immediate risk 
probably at a higher critical level. But here it looks like there was only one protective agent or bodyguard assigned, which was a mistake. And so how do I provide effective protection? In this case, probably more than one protective agent. Again, I don't know the details. Well, I, I actually know the details behind the assassination, but I don't know the detail around the protective agent itself. We do talk about the details of this attack uh, in our uh, just real basic three-day course we've got coming up. Uh, and it gets into planning. And of course, it gets into the myth of the solo practitioner. That's what this is. One protective, uh, protective agent trying to provide protection. Most of the time, that's going to be a, not going to be effective. So here, uh, probably needed more than one protective agent. So he's picking up the principal. Okay. You're going to see an assassin move up very, very quickly. So how do I provide effective protection? In this case, probably more than one protective agent or bodyguard. Assassin walks directly up behind the principal, assassinates the principal, and also attacks the bodyguard. Okay. Boom. The principal's assassinated. The bodyguard is also, also attacked. There's a, uh, a long reaction time. The bodyguard looks like the pistol was inside the bag that he had over his shoulder. And so, again, how do I uh, conduct to provide effective protection? In this case, probably more than one protective agent. Okay. All right. If you guys and for ladies, got ladies and guys are interested in this, we have our introduction to executive protection that gets into how to conduct advances, operational planning, uh, and those arrivals and departures November 4th through the 6th. That's a Thursday through Saturday, Brentwood, Tennessee. You can go to our website uh, and you can uh, you can register there through Eventbrite. Uh, the price of that course is 300 bucks, hundred dollars a day. And again, we get into very specifically. Uh, the uh, operational planning, conducting the advances and arrivals and departures. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can send us an email at uh, michaelmansecuritieservice.com. Uh, you can give me a call, 615-956-3912, or you can get me at contact at michaelmansecuritieservice.com, and I will answer the questions for you. Okay. All right. Hope to see you next week uh, with part three. Uh, as we get into part three, we're going to talk about advances. So again, if you've got some questions, send them to contact at michaelmansecurityservices.com. And remember, folks, it is about prevention, not response. Right? Physical protection is all about prevention and not response. See you next week.